I'm Jared Richards with Ben Atuller, Johnson Deere. Today we're going to be talking about selling a small business. Um, business sales happen all the time. And so often, business owners of small businesses have never really needed to use an attorney before. So they think they can get by um, selling their business in the same way. And this often can lead to a lot of problems, mainly for one big reason. This right here, seller financing. But first, before we get to that, I want to talk about a couple of concepts around selling your small business. At the end of the day, what are your big goals? One, you want to find a buyer who's willing to pay you value for your business. And two, you want to maximize that value, just like with any, anything, so that you can get the most out of this business that you've built with your sweat, blood, and tears. <clears throat> most small business sales involve what's called an asset purchase. What this allows the buyer to do is the buyer gets to buy the assets from the company, pretty much everything, and they get to leave the liabilities behind and shed that. That gives them a lot of comfort, the buyer, as they buy those assets, that they're not going to have to worry as much about the things that have gone on in your business in the past. So if you um, are selling your business, start thinking about selling assets and not your equity in the company. want to talk about the common ways that businesses are financed from the buyer's side and what you should be thinking about as a seller. Obviously, the simplest and easiest transaction is a cash sale. We do these cash sales every day. Cash goes to the seller and seller gives assets to buyer. It's easy. But if you're selling a sizable business, you know, let's say you're selling your business for $3 million or $1 million, cash may be difficult for a single buyer to come up with. So, if cash isn't immediately available, some type of financing arrangement needs to be made. You could, as a seller of your business, require bank financing. Well, we all know in the uh, economic times right now, bank financing can be somewhat difficult. And depending on your business, it will be more or less difficult. If you sell a business that is heavily, um, has a lot of equipment, a lot of value in equipment, things that can be collateralized, the bank will give you, will lend money on, the uh, buyer may be more likely to be able to obtain bank financing. Otherwise, if the business doesn't necessarily have good collateralized um, equipment or, or items like that or real estate, then the buyer is going to need to come up with its own collateral for a bank type loan. This would be his own home, his car, his planes, his houseboats, assuming he has those. If not, then he's going to be relying solely on his personal credit. And if he needs to come up with $3 million based on his personal credit, he's going to probably be a pretty high net worth individual. Or, if he's an average Joe looking to buy a business so he can build something and have cash flow and a reasonable salary for himself, that route may not be available. Or at least a partial bank financing may be available, but the whole financing probably or may not be available. <clears throat> when that happens, um, sellers often turn to seller financing. Seller financing comes up quite a lot because it makes the easiest, it's the most enticing deal often for buyers. You can get more buyers interested. One, because they don't have to have an enormous sum of cash up front and these hard bank financing um, criteria don't necessarily need to be met. You are now the underwriter. You are now the bank seller. And so you need to go through, if you, if you decide to go this route, you need to go through and start thinking about the steps that a bank would take when they're approving someone for a loan. If you don't, you're setting yourself up for lawsuits and uh, you're setting yourself up to not maximize value in your business. So what would be key when you're, when you're looking at a buyer who wants to buy your business, you've agreed on a price, you think the price is fair, and in fact you think you've, you're selling it for a little more maybe than you would have otherwise, typically a seller financing arrangement is going to sell for more than a cash sale because the, the cash sale is you know, uh, going to be more, uh, it's going to be quicker and less risky to the seller. So seller finance, you're going to want to look at the background of the buyer. You're going to want to look at their credit score. You're going to want to look at, you know, do they have any bankruptcies? What, you know, look at their financials, past tax returns. You're going to want to do your own due diligence. Um, on the buyer to make sure that they are credit worthy. The other thing that you're going to want to do that many, many, many sellers fail to do here is, like a bank, get collateral. If the buyer has any tangible items, whether it's a car 
or a home or even the business itself, you're going to want to collateralize any type of loan that you make. Remember, secure that loan, collateralize it, because if you don't, this is an unsecured debt. And in bankruptcy, you're going to be getting, if, if the buyer were ever to declare bankruptcy, you're going to be getting pennies on the dollar, and you're not going to have a right to any assets, including the business assets that you just sold. Remember, if this seller, if the buyer cannot make this work, at the very least, if you've secured the business properly, at least you may have a right to take those assets back, operate the business some more, and then try to sell it again. Collateralize, collateralize, collateralize. Let's talk quickly about maximizing value in that business. Um, you can get a lot, well, in any business sale, a buyer or a sophisticated buyer, a buyer who is really serious is going to ask to see the past performance of the business. So they're going to be asking for things like financials. They want to see your major contracts. They want to know what debt there is. They're going to want to see asset lists, inventory lists, customer lists. Yes, this may be, you may need to sign a non-disclosure agreement first so you don't give away all your secrets. But if you have these things organized before your first buyer comes to the table so that when the buyer comes and they say, okay, we want these items, you can hand them a packet of materials and they can see it up front. They're going to know that you're serious. They're going to know that you're organized. And they're going to know that they can't mess around with you. And you're going to be able to drive a harder bargain and negotiate a harder and higher um, sales price. You may also want to do some additional homework by completing an appraisal. Have a third party appraise your business. See what other businesses similar to yours have been selling for in the last six months, nine months, or a year. Comp studies like that. You may also want to consider hiring a business broker. A business broker obviously costs money, but if they can find the right buyer who this type of business fits well in their portfolio or exactly the type of business they're looking for, that type of buyer is probably going to be willing to pay a higher price for the business than somebody who is less interested. Um, so to recap, seller, well I guess these are just right over here. Um, cash sale, seller gets cash, sells the assets to the uh, buyer, and then from those cash proceeds, any liabilities and obligations get paid off as a condition to closing, so those assets are free and clear of liens. Um, bank financing, we, 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 we discussed this a bit. This is obviously more, this is probably preferable for a seller to seller financing because you're shifting the risk to the bank that the buyer is going to, is, is going to default on the loan. Seller financing, remember, the buyer, the buyer is making a promise to you under a note that they're going to pay you. So it's only as good, that promise is only as good as their ability to pay. The business isn't working out as well or they're not operating it correctly or they're not putting in enough time their efforts are going to affect your return. And now, what's more, is you don't control those assets, the underlying value in that business. So if they fail, you've given away that business and you don't have that income coming in. So think about these things as you prepare to sell your small business.